Hello and welcome to Hey, I Loved That Movie, the podcast where we rewatch the films we loved when we were younger to see if they still hold up. I'm Dan. I'm Michael. And I'm Helena. And for this episode, we watched The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Yeah. So did you cut off then? The Hitchhiker's <laughs> Guide to the Galaxy? <laughs> Yeah, no, I said okay. Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Maybe it cut off. It cut off for me. I just got Hitchhiker's oh. Guide to the Galax. <laughs> yeah, oh. <laughs> Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galax. Um, that's oh, how the, the, cool, the, the cool kids are saying it. The Hitchhiker's yeah. Guide to the Galax. <laughs> oh, yeah, have you watched H.G. Galax? H.G. <laughs> Galax sounds like a, he'd write some amazing fantasy novels. <laughs> <laughs> he does. <laughs> uh, this is one of those films where it's it's not aged badly necessarily, but like bizarre cast. It's Again, very weird 2005. Weird uh, same same year as the last movie we just recorded for, yeah. um, Valiant, which yeah. is weird, weird to think about. Yeah. Um, Not on purpose. But I've I've seen this like a few times. I, I quite enjoy this. I've currently yeah. got the book sitting on my bookshelf. I've not read it yet. <laughs> I've listened <laughs> as, to... As is a theme. I have kind of listened to the um, radio play. Radio yeah, play? I've listened yeah. to the... I've got it... Uh, I've, I've read the audio book. Yeah. Listened to the audiobook, and I think I've I've read bits of the book. Like when I was a when I was younger, having seen the film, then wanted to read the book, but then the book was kind of a little bit harder than the film. And yeah, but... I've I've listened to so long, and thanks for all the fish on Spotify. So <laughs> I, it's a great, amazing opening song. Can we it is really good. Incredible it's, opening yeah. song. Um, amazing. Yeah. I imagine that isn't in the book. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, the penguin, uh, the, not penguins, the dolphins. The dolphins find a way, yeah. No, I imagine Matt's in it, but I don't think that he wrote down the lyrics to So Long and Thanks for the Fish. I think that was probably made for the film. Probably. Like, a, a lot of the, the things that were added in this film were done by Douglas Adams, like, before he died as well. Yeah. They, so they, um, so it, it was still, it's not like someone's taken his work and then just, like, m- mashed it no, up no. and whatever. He, he did a first draft of the script before he passed yeah. away. And then it got handed over to, I forgot his name, but another writer, and he sort of finished it. Yeah, sort of tidied it up, made it more script-like, I guess. So this is a good film. Yeah. I I really like this. Like, this has some fucking great jokes in it as well. Like, bits that always get me. Um, Incredible cast. It's it's so well done. Yeah. Uh, So So, this film follows main character... Arthur Dent, played oh, by Dent. Martin Freeman. And Martin yeah, Freeman. And, and his friend, most deaf. Yeah. yeah. I've, been really, <laughs> I've been really getting into um, like old hip-hop. So yeah. this, I totally, I'd remembered it was um, uh, that Arthur Dent was uh, Freeman. Martin Freeman. Totally mm. forgotten that it was most deaf. And I was just yeah. like, <laughs> the, like, I am not, you. I'm used to him being like, you know, in with the in in with the hip hop classics. Yeah, no, he's in this film. He's really good in yeah, it. Yeah, he's in it. Hey, he Everyone's is really good. Like everyone is good in this. Like Zoe Deschanel as um, Trish. Um, she's great. Yeah, she just plays Zoe I mean, Deschanel, the same character yeah, she does in yeah, everything else. Early two thousand so. Zoe Deschanel. <laughs> However, she feels less Zoe Deschanel in this film. Yeah, like, she I don't know. Less... She's like, do you want to go to Madagascar? No, see, she. It's because she doesn't have bangs, isn't she, it? That's why. Maybe she. To be honest, I I did not recognize her, and then I was like, oh no. Was, <laughs> I thought bangs. she does have bangs. But she's got like bangs. bangs. But they're not like bangs straight across, like how she. Has so hair. she's not got a blunt fringe. Yeah, they've not got. She's not got new girl hair. No, ah. <laughs> but yeah, she feels like so when they felt when you first like meet her and do the backstory and thing. So she feels like she's not. Um, what do you? What's the the thing? It's the girl, Jess, manic pixie dream girl. Oh, she feels she doesn't feel like a manic pixie dream girl. She feels like, sorry, she feels like a manic pixie dream girl when he meets her at the party. But yeah. later on, she feels like she's an actual person. Yeah, she's yeah. An so actual it, it does yeah. it does the actual decent thing about of a manic pixie dream girl story where it actually the 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 male gate like perspective of her at the start isn't actually who she is. Yeah, and but like she has changed, like yeah. since she's been on the ship, she, since she's like, because that's all she wanted. She wanted to go on an adventure, and she's had the adventure, and she's like, actually, it, it it's not that fun. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's a pretty fucking horrific adventure when you think about it. 
Yeah, yeah, because she gets picked up by Sam Rockwell, who is also yeah. incredible in this, um, playing Beeble Brox. Uh, the president <laughs> of the universe. Yeah, he picks her up, and then it kind of cuts back to Arthur Dent. And like, so his home was about to be destroyed for a bypass to be put in. In more and ways then when than he gets, one. yeah, when he gets back home, it uh, like falls like, no, we we have to go. Yeah. Um, and it turns out he's an alien, and they disappear. They um, and it turns out. Vogons are here to destroy Earth to put a, a space a bypass, bypass through. through it. Yeah, and the dramatic zoom out that just keeps oh, going yeah, yeah, is so it? good. <laughs> like, um, and I, I, I do love. Obviously, it's 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 not a subtle comparison, but the fact that it is like the exact same thing is happening to him, and yeah. the confusion that causes is like, man, my home's been destroyed, <laughs> and it's like, yeah, I'm I'm really sorry, uh, and it's like, oh wait, no, you're. Not just your home. Oh, you mean this home? So, so yeah, most um, <laughs> because in most death, Ford. I mean, he's most deaf, but yeah, yeah. Uh, grabs a towel because you always bring a towel. Yeah, towels are the most important thing to bring with because you. Because it's in the guide, and he's a, he's a writer for this guide. Yeah, he wrote, which he is essentially the... um, Trip Advisor. Yeah, but yeah. for everything. <laughs> it's yeah, it's it's how to survive the universe, really. Uh, it try, like it's all in, it's every piece of information that anyone might not might ever need. Yeah, which is really cool. Um, and it's in like a really cool book, and I'm surprised they never like. If this came out now, they'd build a website for it. Yeah, yeah. It would, like function exactly the same as the book, or there'd be an app, and they'd get Stephen Fry to voice all of it, and he'd get so tired. He's so <laughs> his his voice his voice is perfect for it. Yeah, because I think even Douglas Adam was like the only person I want to narrate it is Stephen Fry. Um, Which is reasonable. I think most of the, I think I was reading most of the cast was picked by Douglas Adams before he died. Yeah, he he had like very specific people in mind for very specific roles, and no, that's why no. all the Tories pay, play the Vogons. Yeah, <laughs> hmm. yeah. Uh, so I yeah. think in one of the in the like original TV series, hmm. it's like the DVD case is kind of like the. Like yeah. the book, um, with "Don't Panic" printed on the front. Yeah, oh, on the back. Yeah, on the back. yeah. And on the front, it's a bit busy saying, you know, "Hitchhiker's Guide to the <laughs> Galaxy" because that's quite a long yeah. title. Yeah, that's why when we put this up for Twitter vote that one time, it didn't all fit in. Um, but um, it is it oh, is it's such a good film. So his his house yeah. has been destroyed, but then also the world has been destroyed. But thankfully, he's been saved by Most Deaf, who is actually an alien hitchhiker. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They get picked up by the Vogons, and then the Vogons decide they should die because they don't like their poetry. But the Vogons' poetry is the second worst in the universe. So, well, it's like hitchhiking isn't isn't actually legal. They don't hitchhike in that they don't get let on. They kind of sneak on. Yeah, 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 they're not there legally, and so they get kicked out. And then a a randomizer ship picks them up, and then we get Ford. I think on the sofa. (laughs) That is one of my favorite lines. Like I, I, I love how well done the um, alternative realities are. Yeah, Yeah. I I really like that. It's my favorite song by Wet Leg. So So, yeah, we go over to the ship, the the most valuable ship in the universe. Yes, Um, and it's Beeblebrox's ship, and he's there, and it's and Marvin's there, and Marvin is a depressed robot voiced by Alan Rickman. Yeah, he is amazing. Uh, and the ship, the I like the the doors on the mm. ship have. Oh yeah, the, the ship's a... got this like sunny disposition that they all hate. Oh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> the doors. Go, oh, oh. <laughs> it's great. It's amazing because they never drop that joke. Whenever they walk no. through it through the rest of the thing, you get that oh, noise, yeah. and it's great. Um, but yeah, we learned that the main guy, the president, what's his character's name? Beeblebrox. Beeblebrox. He had to. Split his personality, so he's got two heads, right? Yeah, he's got the second head sort of yeah. under his chin. He like yeah lifts his head up and it's the second one. Yeah, because he had to put all of his like chaos in that. Yeah. Um. Oh, it's, this film's so good. This film's so you know like when there's certain writers that they just have that like ability to write weird. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Douglas Adams was one of one of the best. Same with like Terry Pratchett. That kind of. Yeah, exactly. That's what. That's one of the reason I like this. Uh, yeah, yeah so I mean, it's one of those ones. If you like, if you like the Discworld, you'll enjoy reading Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Yeah, that kind of like surrealist uh, reality stuff. It's great. It's amazing. And it's so hard to write. 
yeah. like that and it for it to make sense and so I you just see... like keep on suspending your disbelief as well yeah. but it, you yeah. really do in this like that wasn't a problem for me at all watching this yeah like everything has to universally make sense within the world but individually it doesn't have to like the idea of an alternative reality drive where like it it shoots you through through space by like jumping through realities of course that makes sense yeah yeah, and it has like a little PowerPoint esque presentation on how that works. Yeah, from the Hitchhiker's it. Guide to the Cal- from the Hitchhiker's Guide, it's like, yeah, with yeah. with animation. We're like, cool, it I does get it, it now. So well. Yeah, and we also it. learn about the race of beings that make the supercomputer. Yep. To calculate the answer to life, the universe, and everything. Deep thought. It takes seven and a half million years. I... Helen Mirren voices Deep Thought it's as well. Very... I love the <laughs> design of Deep Thought. Yeah. Yeah, that, like, it's really cool. <laughs> big-headed robot that's just like leaning lazily. It's so good. The, um, um, they ask it. But yeah, so Bezelbrod wants to go yeah. to... Is it Zarathia? Is that something yeah, like? something yeah. like, yeah. Um, that's the problem with sci-fi, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, we're bad at names <laughs> in general. Yeah. Yeah, he wants to go there because the ro- um, Deep Thought calculated that the answer is 42, but it was like, but I need a question yeah, they to never go with a- that. They never asked Deep Thought a question. Yeah. They just asked what is for the answer. What yeah. is the answer to everything? Yeah. And so Deep Thought's like, I I need a question, and so that's why Beeble Brox is trying to get there to, to find out the question and I was gonna say also get a gun, but that comes later on. Yeah, no, Magrath <laughs> Magrathea. Yeah. Um and the reason he's he wants to find out the the answer to this. Well he question. wants to find out the question. That's the question to this answer yeah. even, or whatever. Um and the only way to get it is using Heart of Gold, this, this ship's improbability drive. Yeah, because it's an improbability drive. They can't choose where they want to go. Yeah. It just happens. So they need to find a way to stabilize it to then go where they want. And the next time they use it, they end up becoming like knitted characters for, for yeah, a moment. Oh, and and it, that's like, really cool. Yeah, Martin Freeman's like throwing up and it's Almost. just like that multicolored wool. It's um, and then he, they're is... still like pulling bits of it out of his mouth. That shot yeah. is so good. Yeah. Yeah. Like I was watch I watched that like three times. That shot is so good where he runs over to the bin as a wall person. Yeah. And then mm. in kind of one shot it transitions from the Everything wall is wool. person vomiting up wool to him being a person pulling wool out of his mouth. Yeah. It's so good. <laughs> it's really well done. <laughs> yeah, there's so many like the, the overarching plot is is obviously like like utter nonsense, but it's it's fine, it yeah. is a plot. But the, yeah. the bits in this are so funny. Yeah. Um another favourite is the um the whale. The 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 yes, the, 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 the heat seeking missile nuclear missile that gets turned into a whale. Yeah, and that's um Bill Bailey that's voicing the whale as well. Yeah. yeah and and the other miss the other missile becomes a bowl of petunias that just thinks, Oh no, not again. Yeah, because <laughs> the whale is like the whale has to learn about its surroundings. Yeah, that's a flaw. What is this? What is this passing <laughs> through me? It feels great. It feels good. I'm going to call it wind. I yeah. love it. At the end, it's like, oh, this thing's much closer. I wonder if it's friendly. It's getting closer. <laughs> What's that yeah. doing? I'm going to call it ground. Hello, ground thud. <laughs> and the ball of wind is falling through the air. And the only thought it has is, oh no, not again. Yeah. And the, there's the also bit which is quoted quite often, which is um, in the beginning the universe was created, and this made many people angry and was widely <laughs> regarded as a bad, move. a bad move. Yes, that's yeah. like the opening line to the to the book, yeah. after the radio yeah. series, um, book so adaptation. How? Do, and, how? Do, yeah. I'm I'm so like f- com- jealous of people that can write like that. Yeah. In that sort of style, I'd love to be able to write in that style. Just, it is I'm... really, it's really fantastic because it's so, it's so funny, but it is so like, it's so clever as well, and so obvious. Like that's what gets you is like it's so like, oh yeah, no, that's a that's a really clever, good joke, but it's so like, obviously you write that, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like obviously you go, the world is made, and this made a lot of people very angry. Yeah, <laughs> that's so. Yeah, or, or like the bit um, earlier on where it talks about the Vogon's poetry being it's either the third or second worst. It's the second it's like, worst behind. Yeah, and it's like the worst was this woman from Sussex or something, but yeah. that doesn't matter now because Earth's been destroyed. <laughs> that was destroyed in <laughs> the like, 
I also I like the way that it says the um that was destroyed when the bypass was put through. Like it's like a separate event, and we <laughs> yeah. haven't just watched it happen. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so that was amazing. Uh, yeah, I I just love this film and the way it's yeah. written and like so they style. they sort of have shenanigans. Um, yeah. They have to go to Hermakovich. John Malkovich. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So he's it's like a quest basically. They have to do bits, yeah. get things, and every now and then someone gets kidnapped or whatever. Yeah, yeah. But they're being hunted down by the Vogons and yes. the Galactic Vice President Quest Questula. Yeah, Tr- 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 um, yeah. Trish gets captured because they think she tried to kidnap the president as well. So they... um, and then she's being tortured by the Vogons. Yeah, they take the president to get her out, yeah. and they're like to oh, the Vogons. And then... They're going along that um, the beach when they first land, and every time one of them has a thought, it slaps them. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> like it's a defense because Vogons don't think. No. <laughs> uh, I like I like when they do because Vogons are like hyper bureaucratic. They're like, uh, we want to get this woman out. The presidential decree. This is the president. She's like, this is the wrong form. Yeah. <laughs> the president. But she she is woman. happy for them to go and fill out the form. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then once they, uh, like, as soon as they've done it, she's like, "Okay, okay, yeah. <laughs> done." Like even, stamp. E- <laughs> even to the point where, like, when they're all escaping and the um, vice president's like, "Get them!" and an alarm goes off, and they're like, "Oh, one hour for lunch." Okay, <laughs> let's go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <it's laughs> but there, they also find out that Beeblebrox is the one that signed the um, order to destroy Earth, and he thought he was just doing a, an order. Yeah, he, si- yeah. he signs the decree to destroy lo- Earth, love and kisses Beeblebrox. So yeah. Obviously, at that point, Trish is um, pretty disillusioned with him as a boyfriend. Yeah. yeah. He is pretty shitty. Oh, and at that point, he's had his second personality taken as hostage, as, as like, leverage for um, yeah. John Malkovich. Because for, for, John Malkovich wants him to get a gun for him. Yeah. Yeah, yeah the point of view gun. Yeah. Yes. Um, and, yeah, as... as uh, like, he'll give him the co- uh, coordinates to Magrathea, but only if he leaves... His his actual thinking head as collateral. Yeah, yeah. So they put him. Oh, I did like this. The thinking cap. Oh yeah, where well, they have to squeeze the it's, lemon. It's a lemon. It's a lemon <laughs> yeah. squeezer with a chin strap. Yeah, it's, but it's, it's it's there's some lines in it that just absolutely killed me. Yeah. It's such a it is such a quotable film, and like I remember. Uh, to be fair, this used to wind me up a lot as a kid. If I got sulky or grumpy or like hormonal, then my my parents would quite often quote Mar- uh, Marvin the Android <laughs> at me. Like, yeah, oh, everything's so up fair. <laughs> and I'm like, shut up, go away. You isn't, don't understand me. <laughs> isn't helpful. Um, so they get the gun. When when do they? Get... The gun is at deep. It's inside Deep Thought. Yeah. Um. So they they well they have to they they first go to a. The weird planet that shoots missiles at them, um, they end up on there, and it's like a snowy planet, and there's some portals that they have mm. to go through. But Arthur Dent doesn't make it through the portal, and he's stuck with Marvin and the other three like, get through, because he's so doubtful about going through the portal, which is yeah. reasonable. Like. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty scared of portals. I don't trust them. I, honestly, I've never come into contact with one, so I don't know how I feel about them. I'm worried well, about like what if it's just a copier and it's not you that comes out the other end and you die. Well, now I'll be more careful around portals. How often do you run in, run into portals, Helena? It came up on Star Trek the other day. Yeah, or like okay. the the main character in Portal Two is actually Helena. She got trapped in there for <laughs> yeah, a bit. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> portals and giant robots called Gladys. Yeah, and cake. Yeah, I, I I'm trying to remember this film, but it all kind of. Mold yeah, the together. ending becomes a little bit weird because while yeah, the other three go through to try and get to um like they get to Deep Thought, but Arthur gets picked up by Bill Nye. Yep. Who's Slarty Bartfast and uh, Yes. That, that's the guy who makes planets. Yeah. Um with his team. Yeah, they're rebuilding Earth. Yeah, because um They were commissioned. It was destroyed. Yeah. Earth, Which it turns out Earth was commissioned. Such a good scene. It's well, so yeah. well so well done, isn't it? The the creation of Earth. The creation too. of Earth, yeah. The so yeah, the Earth was commissioned by the people that the made Deep Thought. Yeah. Yeah. And they've been 
pretending to be mice the whole time. <laughs> well, they've been searching for the question. Yeah. Like, they, they, they made a race of people because they hoped at some point one of them would... It's a computer... Yeah. Basically, Earth is a computer program. Yeah. Yeah, to try and figure out the question. Um, and when the other three get to Deep Thought, Deep Thought's just been watching TV. Yeah. And hasn't thought about it. <laughs> yeah. Well, it has no other answer. The answer's 42. Yeah. So they're... They get taken, those three, right? Well, they they get the point of view gun and they're kind of using it on each other. Yeah. And then it kind of stops following them for a bit while it follows Arthur. And he eventually gets his house back and they're all there having a party for him. Yeah, Yeah, with loads and loads of food. And they're kind of drugged. Yeah, they get drugged and then the mice try and cut out his brain. Yeah, Yeah, they're they're like, well, you know, we can still study you. Yeah, and he and then he comes up with the fact that his question is, is she the one? And and the answer's yes, not forty two. And they're like, oh, not helpful. Yeah, they're yeah. like, yeah, that, <laughs> fuck that sh- soppy shit. We don't, <laughs> we, like, we don't want to be enlightened. We want to be famous. Yeah, yeah. And then the Vogons arrive and start shooting at them as well. Oh yeah, like, there's Martin. a caravan shootout, which is pretty fantastic. Yeah, I did, I did like when the mice were like, "We just want to have a look. It won't hurt." And then it's just like blades and swords. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I liked how uh, when they get to the caravan, uh, Beeblebrox is trying to like he thinks it's a spaceship and yeah. he's trying to turn the oven on to fly. <laughs> yeah, it. the gas oven. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, Marvin get Marvin like gets shot in the back of the head as well. He's like, oh, now oh. I've got a headache. Collapses the, oh. the, the f- Okay, so like the funniest. I don't know why this part in the film makes me laugh so much. Not that part. Um, the part in the it. I don't know why it's so funny, but it's when the Vogons are like walking towards the back gate, and um, most Def runs at them with the towel, and they're just like, you yeah. got a towel. Run. Oh, that bit run. absolutely killed me. <laughs> Every it's still like in my head today. Like, <laughs> oh, no, 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 he's got a towel. He's got a towel. Run. I mean, they're such stupid looking creatures because they're very like big, big torso, little limbs. Yeah, and yeah. then it's just like, um, then they come back and he's like, oh, he's closed the gate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's those little like background voices that kill me. They just go, oh, he the game on. <laughs> but their guns are just like strapped to their chest and it just fires out randomly. <laughs> Which is perfect because it's like if you fire enough times, you're bound to hit something. Yeah. But then the, yeah, so they, the Vogons get hit with the, th- the, de- um, the, the, the point of, point view, of gun view gun by, fired yeah, by it, the android. It, it, yeah, it's fired by Marvin, who like kind of turns it up so it hits everyone at once, and they all get really depressed and stop <laughs> moving. What's around. the point? Oh. <laughs> and Vestula is not. Is, what's her name? Her name's not Vestula. Was it Quest- Questula? Quest- it's like, yeah. no. What are you doing? Everyone yeah. stand like, and all the vocals just like, no. Uh, I'm yeah. tired. I don't want to mm. do anything. <laughs> Why are vocals uh, afraid of towels? <laughs> Because towels, towel. towels are the most useful That's piece true. of equipment you can ever use. That's true. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Arthur decides that instead of settling back on on Earth, he's gonna go on the adventure in space. Yeah. And most Def is like, oh, I know this great restaurant at the end of the universe, which I think is the title of one of the books. It's the title of the yeah. next book. Yeah, and then it just ends with Marvin like. Not that anyone cares what I say, but the restaurant's at the mm-hmm. other end of the universe. It's <laughs> <laughs> so good. Yeah, it, it, yeah I, I, really, I really enjoyed this, yeah. this film. Did you guys like the bit in the credits as well? Did you watch through that? No. Uh, so, no, I don't think I watched the credits this time. So halfway through the credits, there's an entire section about um, a group of aliens that were warring with each other. And... Arthur's like last words somehow ended up traveling to them like millions of years ago and they've been flying to attack Earth ever since. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then when they arrive to attack Earth, they're eaten by a small dog because they're actually just tiny. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's yeah. the bit from Men in Black 2, but yeah, way but, better but done. Good. <laughs> but good. Yeah. This film's great. Yeah. Go watch this yeah, film. I like this. Go watch it. Yeah. It's got great jokes. Everyone has like their favorite line. Um, they have cool equipment on the ship. Yeah, they've got the craving creator thing as well. Yeah, did they did did they localize that for Americans? Because I distinctly remember because you know she looks at it and like it creates whatever she's craving and it creates a donut. Yeah, I yeah. distinctly remember seeing like because it's it's a jam donut. It's like a 
English donut. Whereas yeah. it's not like a ring. I remember distinctly remember seeing a ring donut. Oh. And I don't know if they like localized it for Americans for that because it's a complete. I don't know. I just re- I distinctly remember seeing like a typical sprinkled ring donut. Maybe you watched it through the improbability drive. Maybe. One time. Yeah. Maybe. Uh, That's what the Mandela effect is. Yeah. <laughs> or, yeah. Or I just have a bad memory. Maybe that too. I actually like. As well, as well as watching this like a good few years ago, I think most recently, I, apart from, you know, the other day, I watched this only about a year ago as well. <laughs> right. Yeah. I've definitely, yeah, I've seen this regularly. I don't think I've seen it in like three or four years, though. I might have caught I, Yeah, I think it. I've watched it with you before mm. as well. Oh, yeah, definitely. Like, yeah. Yeah. Because I had we... this on DVD. <laughs> Can we just... Because I remember quoting the sofa bit. Yeah. <laughs> like... Can we just the amount of times on this podcast you two have gone? Oh, I remember when we, we, we you two watched this film together. I why didn't I never get invited to these things? Uh, we watched Underworld at two a.m. that one time. We did, but that was the one time, <laughs> and it was odd. But no, you, we both lived time. in the same town. All the time. Yeah. This would have been nice to be invited. Didn't you think like, oh, in like three or four years, we'll be doing a podcast with Mikey? We should probably invite him so we can have. <laughs> you say three Mikey. or four years. This was <laughs> about was like ten years. This, ago. This one, was how about old do you think we are? <laughs> we're old now. Um, yeah. Ten years ago. No offense, but I'm sure you were invited. I don't think I was. We'll, we'll all get together no, and have a movie night, no, and it'd fine. be good. It's because you'd gone to to university. Oh yeah, you were in Lincoln. Uni. It's fine, guys. I you, you fucked up I North forgive for a you. <laughs> I forgive you for not inviting me. I mean, it was pretty depressing. Important. We used to watch pirated movies and eat Poundland cake. That's not depressing, actually. It was excellent. No, it was uh, great. Remember <laughs> that one time we got the Will Smith CD? Yeah. We got carrot cake and Big Willy style the Will Smith CD. Poundland mm. used to be such a gem of a store. Yeah. And then we bought KFZ from it, and it was the worst film. KFZ was bad. Yeah. Like, wow. I don't think I'm misremembering how bad that film was. Well, no. if only I was there to watch it to share my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> In this cool... Isn't it fun, guys, having, like, cool bag, stu- bag stuff together we can talk about, right? It's really fun when we watch films together. <laughs> but for that one time we watched Underworld... <laughs> It's because we used to, I'm pretty sure we watched a lot of Teen Wolf together. Oh, it's fine. <laughs> Same with um, American Horror Story. What? Yeah, I never watched that with Dan. I don't remember watching that with Dan. I don't think that was we, me. Uh, <laughs> you intru- No, you introduced me to it, for sure. <laughs> yeah, but that's not watching it yeah. together, though. <laughs> we I think we watched, maybe, I don't know. I watched a lot of, I threw a lot of, sorry to send you a lot of shows, I don't watch them yeah. with you. Yeah. <laughs> we no, need to start, we, we need no, to... Like, Hang out in person together. again now. Now that you know people are allowed to see each other, and this is no longer just the lockdown project. Yeah, now we ref- now we're just refusing to record in person. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. whereas before we had a, we didn't. Have I mean, a choice. it's a bit of a commute. Once a week, Helena is all we're asking. <laughs> so only in what ten nine nine hour round trip for me. That's one. That's all right. You got That's time to what... watch the films yeah. on the way. <laughs> <laughs> That's almost perfect. <laughs> uh, so, what what would you guys give this film out of ten? Nine, nine towels out of ten. <laughs> I don't, I like, I don't know what the missing point is, but it doesn't have it. It's, it's not like Matilda level for me. Yeah, but it's very, very, very good. But I don't know what that missing one is. That missing one is like the little, the little the genus, like the little special thing. Not that yeah, honest, like really. the, I tend to find that for some reason the ending feels that, like, even the times I've watched it before, the ending where it's just, I, I seem to always forget how he ends up with Bill Nye. Yeah, it, and it, I'm just like, how the fuck does that happen? And then it yeah. just kind of does. Yeah. Like, it it but... kind of makes sense. Like the plot, like the actual linear plot of the film does make sense, but yeah. you're so distracted by all the other chaos that it's very yeah. easy to forget because it's not what your brain clings to. But also, again, no, exactly. There's nothing wrong with this film. No, it's just missing that little something. It that yeah, makes I'd, my brain go ooh. <laughs> I'd probably also give this a nine nine dramatic zooms out yeah. of ten. Nine pieces of Vogon poetry. Nine. We could nine, go on forever. Nine about... songs by Wetleg. <laughs> 
nine <laughs> towels. Was yeah, I, um, I think I'd, I think I'd give this eight. Yeah, no nine, nine probability drive clips because they were yeah. my. It's, it's the it's the real shining point of the film because yeah. they did they didn't go they didn't half ass it. No. Um, I I it's just very weird to see like Zoe Deschanel, <laughs> Mo Steph, and Martin Freeman doing it's a film so together weird, does, Na- like yeah. now because <laughs> they've it's, obviously yeah. <laughs> all grown and had different wildly different careers. It's wild. It's weird that they never talk about it either. <laughs> like no one ever talks about this film as like a film film, but it's what it's good and it's so strange. It is strange. Um. But it, it it's it, it's pretty it's pretty magical actually. Like I'm definitely gonna see it again. Yeah, I'm yeah. definitely gonna watch it again at some point. It's just not got that one. I don't know what that one point is, but it's special. <sighs> I think it's the same as the um. It's got the same kind of issue that we have with um Terry Pratchett films, where it's like it can't quite capture the magic. It of... gets real close yeah it get this gets really close but it's, yeah i feel like doesn't... having the narration in this mm. helps because a lot of like a, a a good portion of the humorous bits in those kind of books are just in like the footnotes as well yeah also like it being narrated by one of the best narrators in stephen fry helps yeah that definitely helps i can't imagine this narrated by anyone else except maybe david attenborough <laughs> uh, would but say... he wouldn't have the comedic tone so no. maybe not no. I don't know. I don't know what it is. I don't know what that 1% is. It might just be nostalgia. That one point might be nostalgia. <laughs> but the know. crux of us all. <laughs> I don't know. It holds up. This film's good. It's it's really worth watching. Like, And it, even mm. the animation and stuff isn't bad for... Yeah, mm. it's... I mean, all the creatures are done by the Henson company, so yeah. they, they still look great. Like, the Vogons are all actual, mm-hmm. like, you know, not mm-hmm. people, but they they just got the Tory party to come in and, and act for a bit. Hmm. It was Boris Johnson's first lead role. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, I've been the reason I've been so distracted is I was trying to find the quote because it was one of my favourite lines in the film, just like for a delivery was when there was um Trish is getting really upset. Um and she's like I just, you know, the, your the idea is terrible, and I'm, you know, I'm being supported by a man in a dressing gown and a man whose brains running runs on lemons. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think the reason I've been struggling is because there were several times where I was watching the movie and was like, oh yeah, I'm supposed to be making notes. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I, I was just, I was just enjoying. It. Yeah, it's, it's, it's just, just a, a good, good time. time. It's, a, it's, wrote, it's really yeah. fun. I wrote two notes, yeah. and one of them is a lightsaber knife. <laughs> Hmm. <laughs> yeah, toast as it cuts. Yeah. So, <laughs> how do we not have that yet? <laughs> we promised um, a lot of things in the future. How do we not have toast and knife yet? Also, no. like, what if you want toast one day, but like normal sandwich um, bread the next? You've got. A... You, you're allowed to own more than one knives and knives in no, the no, future. No, no. But when you cut it, it toasts the next slice. True. You got to have right. a. You got to have a fifty-fifty. Yeah. Which doesn't really sound... good for cauterizing wounds, though. Yeah. It depends how hot it gets. Yeah. Hot enough to toast bread. Yeah. Yeah, Skin tougher than bread? Yes. (laughs) Let's find out. (laughs) Then why does it hurt to get toast out the toaster? (laughs) Because you're burning yourself, you're not cauterizing a wound. Uh, it's yeah, it's such a it's such a pleasant little and I think it it is it is very British as well. Yeah, a hundred percent. So there's a lot of there's a lot of charm in it that and a lot of British references that are really fun. Yeah, it's it's very hard to describe what makes a British film British, but this has it. I like the the hopelessness of the acceptance that the the the, the actual plot is trying to find the answer to everything and realizing that it doesn't matter and you'll never find out. Yeah, <laughs> and that life is meaningless ultimately. Yeah. But like, um, there's a joy in that. There's a freedom yeah. in that. It is what yeah. you make it. Yeah, which I feel is quite a British thing to be like. Yeah, well, fuck it. Let's go. <laughs> like, yeah, mm. let's go exploring. Yeah. Yeah, well, I guess on that more positive note then for once, <laughs> I've been Dan. I've been Michael. And I've been Helena. Uh, you can find this podcast on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok at Hilton Pod. That's at H-I-L-T-M Pod. Uh, we're on Discord as well. Uh, come and quote this movie at us. We will, we'll we'll please, be fine. Please. Yeah, it'll be fun. Um, 
Yeah, we have a Patreon as well where you can support the show. Um, yeah. What are we doing for the Patreon? Right, so this, uh, this, this week, week, I imagine you guys are thinking, oh, we're going to like use your money and like make the ship and we're going to fly across the universe and we're going to rebuild Earth better. Um, by that I mean without the Tories. Um, and like you're probably thinking we're probably going to do some big grand thing and good, right? Great ideas, really great, but not what I want to do. <laughs> what I want to do... I want to develop the technology to make a toast knife. <laughs> Step one, toast um, knife, right. heat up your Just knife. Just want, it needs to be a laser though. Oh, okay. So, cuts... so you want to develop a laser? Yeah, I want to create I want to create a lightsaber, but one that isn't good enough to cut skin, only good enough to toast bread. <laughs> How do you make, that's like trying As to make a knife that's like sharp enough cut... to cut bread, but not cut flesh? Uh-huh. And yeah, like, and it also... anything anything can I cut flesh if you try hard enough. Never said. All it right, would be. <laughs> all right, Marvin, calm down. <laughs> I like. I see. So you took that as depressing. I took that as inspirational. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I'm more thinking: can the lights, can the the toasting knife have different settings so that I can toast my hot cross buns without burning? Yeah, them? it's got oh, a yeah. setting. Of, it's got a setting of one to five. Don't know what yeah. the one to five are. Is it time? <laughs> Is it time or is it <laughs> is it toastiness? If it's anything like a normal toaster, three is burnt. It still goes up to five. Yeah, three is <laughs> three. Uh, three is burnt. Five five is charcoal. Yeah, what but happens two is... is definitely not toasted enough. Two is still <laughs> bread. Two is warm bread. <laughs> three is burnt. <laughs> it has to be in that. Also, there's point. no there's no numbers on the dial for how for time. It is just and then there's a dot. <laughs> yeah, and that sort just, of bread temp It's just time. number. Yeah. Um, and the, the most annoying part is, like, on like a normal toaster, you can set the dial and just kind of leave it indefinitely until some monster turns it up or down. Um, don't do that, by the way. If you are sharing a house with someone and they have a toaster set to a dial, just watch the bread and turn it off. <laughs> like, it yeah, auto Turn it off when you're off. ready. Like, don't I have you... to do when I get the, you know, the delicious, um, like, brioche loaf yeah. that you can get from Aldi. Don't change if the you dog. leave that in the whole time, it'll just burn. You've got, yeah. you've got to be there. Don't you know? change the time. The time is optimal. If someone has said it, they've said it for optimal the... toast. Yeah. If you're doing something that isn't toast. Change. I do sometimes have to do the um, scrape of shame into yeah. the bin, getting all yeah. the burnt bits off with my, with um, my toast. But the worst part about that is when it's on a knife, because it's on the side of the knife and you have to keep picking it up and putting it down, it will move that dial. That dial hmm. is not being held in place by anything. It's going to go. It's going to move as soon as you touch it. Wait, your it's... dial's held in place by a knife? No, as in, like, it's not like there's no, like, click to it. It's just oh, gonna okay, yeah, yeah. Ours, ours is just free free spinning. As soon as you... Yeah. Like, ours has numbers it. on it. Oh, they, I mean, they don't, they don't mean anything. No, um, they're just one to five. And I'm pretty sure the dot isn't actually lined up with where the setting is. Not at all. On the, on the to, dial, but... One to five. The dial is one to five, and it's different <laughs> for every toaster. <laughs> there is no stand. The same way that, like, um, showers aren't standardised. <laughs> yeah, no, like... <laughs> no. My, my shower's that awkward, like, you know the tap where there isn't a hot and a cold tap, it's yeah. just... Just one. one lever, and you have to get it just right. Yeah. And if you move it a tiny bit too much to the other way, it will fucking no, burn. No, no one has ever made <laughs> a flawless shower. No one's ever made a shower that works perfectly. Every single no. and everyone. Every time I say this to people, they're like, "Oh, mine's fine though." And then they go, "Oh no, wait, you have to like jiggle it and do. <laughs> you have to do the macarena in front of it for it to, <laughs> to not, and you have to balance it. Like, there's always like fifty caveats to how uh, to use someone's shower. I feel really fancy now because my shower is quite new. And very yeah. straightforward, and it all works still. See, you say that, and we have no hot else. water in the sink in the bathroom. <laughs> there we go. There we That'll do. No. <laughs> but... See, you say that until you have to describe someone else to use someone else who uses your shower, and then you you will have to explain to them how to do the thing. And then that... you'll oh, yeah. realise that there's like a weird That's like, like bowl lever that you have to do before you. you can turn the button on to turn the shower. Yeah, on. like you don't realise you're doing it until you have to explain to someone else this is how you use the shower. Or yeah, you're in someone else's house looking at their shower, like, like oh, yeah, how yeah, do I do this? Mean. What you do is you go in, draw a pentagram on the floor, <laughs> throw some salt into the air. Yeah, you have to turn on three different switches. You don't know what does what. Yeah. Sometimes um, a fan comes on, sometimes not. One, you have to go turn the thing under the sink in the living room, in the kitchen. <laughs> um, then there's like a switch across the room that you have to turn on. Oh, man. Um, British then, plumbing. It Yeah, very much also based on when the house was built. Yeah. Uh, and then look out for if it's a timed light. <laughs> 
because you no one ever wants to have a shower in the dark it's the scariest thing in the world yeah it's bad enough when you're like in a public toilet yeah. and like you know <laughs> having a sit down and uh you know you, you're just about done you're about to start your wiping and then the lights go out and you're like i can't leave the <laughs> stall to try and turn the lights back on the so scariest. i've got to use my phone torch and get blinded while i'm trying to wipe my ass <laughs> use your phone torch <laughs> to wipe your ass you're definitely having a bad time <laughs> no no you use that as the light to see oh. <laughs> it's, the... it's not that bad <laughs> Scary. No, I can't Definitely. find the toilet paper. All I can find is my phone. Oh, I guess that'll do. Guess that'll do, sir. I've run out of socks this week. I can so. wash it. <laughs> yeah, so, it's waterproof. Yeah. So what oh, I what dropped my phone in a bucket of water the other day. <laughs> oh, were you, were you listening to baseless speculation? Um. Yeah, I might have been actually. I was definitely. I think I was listening. Yeah. I should tell. Uh, yeah, it was. So what? what, what phone I'm works. Is, what yeah. I'm saying is we're going to use your uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. Patreon we're, money to make a working shower. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're going to standardise showers. Yeah, yeah, we'll, <laughs> we'll we'll figure it out when we get there. Yeah. I'm recording. I am recording. Stop dilly dallying. I am now recording. Yeah, come on, Dan. <laughs> Right, all good. Do the opening. Cool. Yeah, do yeah. the opening. Hello. Introduce the film. Okay. My God, Dan, come on. <laughs> Dan. Okay. Right. Yeah, we're ready. <laughs> <laughs>